Again, uh, me hearties, ahoy! Once more, are you still ready to join us? Are you ready to chase the white whale? Are you ready to go bounding into madness? Are you ready to slay the Leviathan? Will you splice hands on it? There's this guy named Blair Thomas, right? Who's, who's got his own company, Blair Thomas and Company. And he has been long, he's got this Ahab obsession with the story Moby Dick. And he persuaded the Boeing Corporation to commission three separate companies, Blair Thomas and Company, House Theater, and Looking Glass, to create, to come together, collaborate, and create three separate adaptations in a way that's really unique. I hadn't heard of that. I've heard of sponsoring three companies to collaborate and make a single one. But in this case, it was three separate adaptations. And so we, uh, House Theater, Blair Thomas and Company, and Looking Glass, I happen to be the guy from Looking Glass, met every six weeks and talked and talked about this story and, and stole each other's ideas and shared each other's ideas and, and collaborated. And it was really exciting. It culminated in a, um, this little one night performance down at University of Chicago, a little workshop um, as part of their summer residency program. It was really exciting to be in this environment where you had three companies creating work. And um, so that was, I, I had encountered it in college first. It was, I was supposed to read it for a class and I put it off, put it off, didn't read it. And then over the course of 36 hours, I, I drank a lot of coffee and I stayed awake and read this crazy, weird, thrilling, frustrating, exhilarating novel. And, uh, and that was really my first time reading it. But I, be, because of Blair, I went back and, and, and encountered it again. We had that workshop. Uh, I did a production up at Northwestern um, to help develop the script and, and some of the I choreographic ideas, some of the sound ideas. and. Um, and here we are getting ready to um, do it at Looking Glass in, in its sort of real, real world premiere. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Just the fact that it's set at sea, uh, Moby Dick has, Moby Dick has built into it these, um, uh, these elements that we use in the circus. There's ropes, there's um, sails that could function like silks. There's, um, uh, there's a whole series of sequences that happen underwater, which, you know, in some respects would be impossible, but, but in a theater, nothing is impossible, right? Um, we, we're, we're, we, as an audience and as um, theater makers, we can create things that out of, out of seemingly nothing. So, um, but in terms of circus, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of room for um, play on ropes and cloud swings and um, Spanish webs and um, silks setting in for sails. There's typhoons and storms. Um, how we, how we um, sink the Pequod, how we um, raise the sails, all of that leaves room and opportunity for um, for circus elements to find their way into the show, one of the things I, that I thought was interesting is that at it, a long, long time ago, there's this great connection between the theater and between sailing. Um, it used to be that the sailors, when they weren't on ships, would find work in the theater, and so that's why we have some of the same nomenclature, some of the same elements like rigging, catwalks, uh, the crew is um, something we refer to. So there's this deep connection between sailing and the theater already, and I, I hope that our production will exploit that a little bit. 